I'm really glad we're getting a chance to do this. Uh, I know you you have a lot going on this year. When you sign, uh, I'll set up why I'm very excited about this. But when you signed with AEW, you know, everybody was pretty much really happy about it. Uh, there was kind of still time to do a show like this, but then you get announced for Battle in the Valley. And I, I was honestly kind of bummed because I was like, wait, he's not going to hard to kill. Like, what's going on? And then the Snake Eyes show gets announced. So I'm glad you're finally getting a chance to be in a TNA ring. You're still getting that chance. Uh, now that, you know, the, the weekend's coming up, how are you feeling? Like, you, you talked about it before, but how are you feeling getting a chance to finally be in a TNA ring, get that sort of checked off your bucket list? It's a, it's definitely something that, like, I thought so much about. And, like, even though it was Impact when I first went, it was Impact when I returned, it still was, like, for me, in my eyes, TNA. Like, but I, like, I want the letters. I want the three letters that's attached to my name. So having the career that I have had and finally getting to perform in the place that made me want to be a wrestler, mm -hmm. it's gratifying. Is there, and I know you said, uh, when you first announced the AEW deal that uh, it, it kind of looked like you were going to start around revolution, but there was, I don't think there was a set date announced. Is there a chance that you could show up in TNA again? Like that. I know they have Orlando tapings coming up. No surrender is going to be in new Orleans. That, that all happens before revolution. I believe this is probably going to be my last one. I like, if I was to gamble on it, because I never want to say never anymore because it just sometimes always pans out differently. Mm -hmm. But like right now, I'm going to say this will be my last appearance for TNA. My first and my only appearance for TNA. Are you treating it any differently than uh, you are with, with the New Japan farewell? Because I know you, you sort of made that more formal and I know you spent eight years there, but are are you looking at it any differently? Because it's sort of a farewell to both, especially after you said one and only about TNA right now. I mean, it's different just because New Japan is kind of, New Japan's eight years of my life, man. And like uh, who I was when I first came to New Japan to the person that I am now, like I've gone through a lot of like experiences and experiences that I didn't even want, but like, it's helped matured me and it's helped grow me, grow me. And for the longest time being, like all I ever wanted to be was just a Japanese pro wrestler and I'd done it. And for all of my career, like I will never be able to express how grateful I am to not only New Japan, but the Japanese audience for looking after me. Where I can remove it a little bit with TNA is this is more of just, for me, this is something that's personal because it has given me the career that I have. TNA was the reason why I wanted to become a pro wrestler. I, I can literally sit here and tell you, me and my friends were like all around. We weren't watching TNA. We were just channel flicking. And it just came up on our TV screens. We just couldn't believe what we were watching. Like, it's game changer. All the game changers were a part of TNA wrestling. Like, it, it's like my turn now to be a part of that. Like I changed the game numerous of times, but I want to do it under those three letters. One thing uh, I, I did want to talk about as far as New Japan goes is I saw this, uh, I'll call it a tribute, but you, you got this uh, flag and a, a really nice note from a fan. Um, it, tribalism has been like a topic a lot, and that focuses on the negative side of wrestling, but it's really nice to see people ha being happy for your su success. And I mean it, you specifically, but overall in 2023, you've seen a lot of other names going between promotions and it's really been overall a positive experience. Can you speak to uh, not only just seeing the positive side of wrestling fandom, but maybe what uh, domestic American audiences don't, always understand or maybe don't always see from the from how japanese uh fans receive you uh 
It's really difficult to explain because, like, I don't really know the American tribalism very well. Like, mm -hmm. I haven't been involved in it too much. I think yeah. because I've been and I've not really been heavily involved in that whole topic, but the times I have been there and I have seen it, um, it's it's not nice, and I think it does drag wrestling down. Like, what I loved about this is just. I don't know if anyone sees new backstage nudes from like New Japan or any Japanese company. I feel like that's obviously a main part of it, but like I, I don't think like in America you can't get away with it. I think it's it's all about gossip sometimes. But with New Japan, like of course there's gossip there, but I, it hardly ever gets out there. Mm. But for but for me, like this, I can't tell you what that flag meant, man. Like I. I don't want to talk about it because I will like burst into flipping tears. But it, it's just like I've gone through so much as a human being, like and experienced things that I didn't really want to experience. But I guess you just experience it because it's all part of growing up. Every time that I was like sad or scared or anything about my demeanor was off, Japan was always there to pick me up. And no matter what, like, that was not only my work environment, like, that was, like, my adult life, like, before everybody's eyes. Like, my entire adult life was in front of, of Japanese audience members or on the internet. To grow up beside them all and to have the experiences that I've had, like, I have won championships that I would never think I would ever win. I've had emotional moments. I've, I've lived in Japan. Like, I, I lived there for two years. Like, and to go through the war of the pandemic for the fans that did stick around for New Japan when it was literally impossible to watch clap crowd Japanese wrestling, to go through that all together and to come out on the other side and to, to for New Japan to be ready for this new generation to come through, it was like, it's, it's like an a pleasure man like it was an actual honor to be in that locker room uh to be in front of that audience and to like become a man in front of all of these people like i cannot express that enough my gratitude towards everybody is ah uh, man I, I don't know what my gratitude is this um mm -hmm. you can't put a number on it yeah i uh, i would encourage everybody if you haven't seen it you posted it yesterday it's a, a picture of the flag and the flag has a bunch of messages on it and then there's a note from the fan that that gave it to you it's it's really a, a touching tribute so i would encourage everybody to go check it out you, you could read some of it um i do want to talk about the match though you uh, specifically at uh snake eyes you're gonna get a chance to uh step in the ring with josh alexander uh who who's kind of been the face of TNA for the past few years uh a lot's been said about his world title reign uh it, it seems like everybody wants a shot at him when whether it's coming into the company or you see all these uh for lack of a better term forbidden door matches but uh what are you looking forward to about getting uh the match with Josh at, at you know, especially with being your your one and only quote unquote DNA appearance. My whole thing is is um, like you just said, Josh Alexander is the face of TNA, and that's great, right? Being the face of something is great, but what you want to be is the world beater. Like everybody in every company has a guy that they can say you can beat the world. Like WWE, you got Roman. With AEW, you had Kenny Omega. Uh, with New Japan, you can even say it's me, right? We need DNA. We need the guy that we can say, all right, you're our world beater. You're the guy that we want to go against the re the best wrestlers in the world and know that you're going to represent us. So going forward, man, like I am the world beater. I've gone everywhere and beaten every single person that they put in front of me. Mm -hmm. This is it. Like one shot. Like the the entire landscape of TNA going forward lies on your shoulders. You have 60 minutes on the clock. You, you've you got to put away the best wrestler in the world today. Can you do it? That's the biggest question. 
And like, and that's why people need to be excited mm. because this is Josh's one and only shot to say that I can be the best wrestler in the world. And I can put TNA on my back with all the momentum it has and carry it further. And I don't know if some people might not realize this, but uh, you already have a win over him that went down last year. How do you, how do you sort of uh, step it up? Uh, not only, you know, you just pointed out, it's his only chance to get that win back over you, but how do you sort of raise the stakes for yourself uh, as far as an in-ring perspective? Well, I mean, listen, I can't be going into a company with a, a bad loss record right, right now. I mean, I always enter the year with a little bit of like a slow start to get out of the blocks, but I need to be starting a new company and I need momentum with me. So I'm not willing to put myself down a peg i'm not going to be laying down for anybody if you want to be the well-being you take it from me like but as far as i'm concerned this is business for me mm -hmm. as as emotional as tna is going to be with my name underneath it the moment the bell rings every single bit of emotion goes out of me and this is a pure assassin job mm -hmm. i have a couple more questions for you the first one i i do a watch list feature where i try to get match picks and I was going to ask you, is there a match that uh, you would maybe point to or show U.S. fans what, they, what they've what sort of been missing if they haven't followed your career over in Japan? And I, I preface this by saying, like, I know you have a little bit of exposure, different indies, TNA, Impact, AEW, but if they haven't been watching you on a regular basis in Japan, is there one match that you'd sit and just be like, here's what you're going to get, or here's maybe a preview of what you're going to get? Uh, I, like, in Japan-wise, like, you've got two. You've either got the me and Kenny Omega match from the start of Wrestle Kingdom 17. Mm -hmm. you, if you look at that, or you look at the end of the year where I face Shota Umino, who is, like, the next guy for New Japan, like, the guy that they're probably going to put a lot of their stock behind, as well as uh, Suji, Uemura. Uh But like Shota, for me, like in that match, I think is a perfect example of what I would show if you were trying to explain who Will Ospreay was. Okay. And then final question. I know you kind of touched on this, uh, sort of about how Assassin's Creed has played a really important role in your life. So is there a game you would pick as a good intro to the series? if you want to like bring fans in and see what, you know, the series is all about. Yeah. I would, I would go for Assassin's Creed revelations just because then I think you can already get an idea of who XCO is. And then the backstory behind of uh, the assassins from there. So I think that would be my, if you was going to go like, okay, what game do I need to play first to hook me? I would be like that one. All right. Uh, TNA Snake Eyes is coming up. You'll you'll be able to see Will against Josh Alexander. And then uh, you, you have a big weekend, uh, not to understate it, but uh, you're going to be at Battle in the Valley 2 uh, facing Okada. Uh, thanks for your time and uh, best of luck, not only this weekend, but moving forward in your career. I appreciate this. Appreciate it, my man. God bless you.